au senior președinte. Muito bom dia, muito bom dia a todos. Declaro aberta a sessão. E passamos de imediato ao primeiro ponto da nossa ordem do dia. Declarações do Conselho e da Comissão sobre a crise do Estado de Direito na Polónia e a primazia do direito da União Europeia. E uh, começo por dar a palavra, em representação do Conselho, ao Sr. Ministro dos Negócios Estrangeiros, uh, Andrzej Logar. Tem a palavra. Madam President, Prime Minister, Honorable Members, thank you for organizing this debate. Respect for the rule of law is critical to guarantee well-functioning of the Union. The European Union is a union of law and the primacy of EU law is the foundation of it. In EU architecture, primacy of EU law is the way to guarantee the equal equality of member states before the treaties and to ensure that all Union citizens enjoy the same rights. Without primacy, the application of EU law would vary from one member to another. This would destroy the level playing field in single market. It is also preconditioned for daily interaction and for smoothly resolving dispute. It is, ultimately, the basis for our living together in a common European home. The Presidency is committed to bringing forward exchanges in a positive and constructive atmosphere on rule of law and related issues. Today, at the General Affairs Council, in the framework of the annual rule of law dialogue, ministers will be discussing developments in the area of rule of law in a general, general horizontal debate. The Commission's 2021 Rule of Law report fits into this exercise and the primacy of EU law is among the topics covered in the report. The General Affairs Council will discuss again rule of law issues at its session on 23rd November. A country-specific discussion will cover developments in five main member states, namely Croatia, Cyprus, Italy, Latvia and Lithuania. The Council also remains seized on the Article 7 TU procedure. The Presidency is committed to advancing these proceedings in a Council in December. In addition, the Council continues to closely monitor the recent rule of law developments in Poland. We aspire for a constructive dialogue between the Commission and Poland, which would lead towards converging positions. We will also continue this discussion within the Council. I look forward to your intervention today and, I also, and also to hearing Prime Minister Morawiecki and how Poland sees the way forward. Thank you very much for your attention. Muito obrigado, Sr. Ministro. Tem agora a palavra a Comissão, a Sra. Presidente da Comissão Europeia, quem saúde e agradeço pela sua presença, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. Thank you, President Silva Pereira. 
dear Prime Minister Morawiecki, dear Minister Logar, honorable members. Almost 40 years ago, in December 1981, the communist regime in Poland imposed martial law. Many members of Solidarność, the independent trade union and of other groups, were put in jail simply because they stood up for their rights. The people of Poland wanted democracy, like millions of other Europeans from Budapest to Tallinn to East Berlin. They wanted the freedom to choose their government. They wanted free speech and free media. They wanted an end to corruption. And they wanted independent courts to protect their rights. The people of Central and Eastern Europe wanted to join the European family of free people, a strong community of values and democracy. Because that's what Europe is about, and that is what Europe stands for. And honorable members, the recent ruling of the Polish Constitutional Court puts much of it into question. We have been concerned about the independence of the judiciary for some time. Judges have seen their immunity being lifted and have been driven out of office without justification. And this threatens judicial independence, which is a basic pillar of the rule of law. We have taken a number of measures. We continue to have a regular dialogue but unfortunately, the situation has worsened. And this is not only the Commission's opinion. This is what has been confirmed by the European Court of Justice and the European Court of Human Rights. And now, this has culminated in the most recent ruling of the Polish Constitutional Court. Honorable members, the European Commission is, at the moment, carefully assessing this judgment. But I can already tell you today, I am deeply concerned. This ruling calls into question the foundations of the European Union. It is a direct challenge to the unity of the European legal order. Only a common legal order provides equal rights legal certainty, mutual trust between member states, and therefore common policies. This is the first time ever that the court of a member state finds that the EU treaties are incompatible with the national constitution. And this has serious consequences for the Polish people because the ruling has a direct impact on the protection of the judiciary. The ruling undermines the protection of the judicial independence as guaranteed by Article 19 of the treaty and as interpreted by the European Court of Justice. Without independent courts, people have less protection and consequently their rights are at stake. And honorable members, Polish people must be able to rely on fair and equal treatment in the judicial system, just like any other European citizen. In our union, we all enjoy the same rights. And this basic principle fundamentally impacts people's lives. Because if European law is applied differently in Grenoble or Göttingen or Gdansk, EU citizens would not be able to rely on the same rights everywhere. Honorable members, when joining the European Union, the Polish people put their trust in the European Union. They expected the European Union to defend their rights, and rightly so. The Commission is the guardian of the treaty. It is my Commission's duty to protect the rights of EU citizens 
wherever they live in our union. The rule of law is the glue that binds our union together. It is the foundation of our unity. It is essential for the protection of the values on which our union is founded. Democracy, freedom, equality, and respect for human rights. And this is what all 27 member states have signed up to as part of this union as sovereign countries and free people. Honorable members, we cannot and we will not allow our common values to be put at risk. The Commission will act and the options are all known. First option, infringements, where we legally challenge the judgment of the Polish Constitutional Court. Another option is the conditionality mechanism and other financial tools. The Polish government has to explain to us how it intends to protect European money given this ruling of their constitutional court. Because in the coming years, we will be investing 2,100 billion euros with a multi-annual budget and the next generation EU recovery program. This is European taxpayers' money. And if our union is investing more than ever to advance our collective recovery, we must protect the union's budget against breaches of the rule of law. The third option is the Article 7 procedure. This is the powerful tool in the treaty. And we must come back to it. Because let me remind you, the Polish Constitutional Court that today has, ca has cast doubts on the validity of our treaty is the same court that under Article 7 we consider not to be independent and legitimate. And this, in many ways, comes full circle. Honorable members, I deeply regret that we find ourselves in this situation. I've always been a proponent of dialogue, and I will always be. This is a situation that can and must be resolved. And we want a strong Poland in a united Europe. We want Poland to be at the heart of our debates in building a common future. Poland has a stake in Europe. Together we can build a Europe that is strong and confident in a world where other big powers become more and more assertive. Europe has benefited from Poland's unique experience so much. Without the people of Poland, our European journey would have been very different. When Karol Wojtyła, as Pope John Paul II, went to his homeland. He changed European history forever. When Lech Wałęsa, with a scattered group of trade unionists, overcame a mighty army, we saw the beginning of the fall of the Iron Curtain. And when President Lech Kaczynski ratified the Lisbon Treaty, together with the Charter of Fundamental Rights, he reaffirmed Poland's commitment to our values. Polish people have played a fundamental role in making our union whole, in enabling their homeland to thrive as a vital part of our union. And they will always be. Polsko, jesteś i zawsze będziesz w sercu Europa. Niech jedzie Polska. Niech jedzie Europa. Poland, you are and you will always be at the heart of Europe. Long live Poland and long live Europe. Thank you.
Muito obrigado.